Britain's regional high-speed train has a new look, with the first set back in traffic following the completion of its refurbishment. I'll be checking out the brand new interior of Southeastern's Javelin trains, travelling at speeds of 140 miles an hour from London to Kent, answering the question as to whether this controversial interior is actually any good. Now let's get this show on the rails! Southeastern's high speed services depart from London St Pancras International, a rather unmissable station no thanks to its grand and majestic design. We enter the station from one of the side entrances and immediately find ourselves at the dedicated Eurostar check-in. It isn't long however until we pass through and are greeted by St Pancras's many shops and its iconic original train shed, which dates back to 1868 when the station was constructed. Low traffic made the station under threat of closure in the 1960s, would you believe? However, its derelict days are now quite literally a thing of the past. Annually, it sees over 50 million people visiting it a year, and not just for travel. One in six are simply here to enjoy the many shops present within the station. The extensive redesign it received in the early 2000s, as part of the new Eurostar and HS1 era, has given it a new lease on life, as partially evidenced here. Since I last visited, St Pancras received these rather snazzy new passenger information screens in the main concourse. Personally, I think they're fantastic and a huge improvement, but what do you think? Let me know below. Southeastern's high speed services depart from the dedicated platforms 11 to 13, located just adjacent from King's Cross Station. The company has also recently started accepting e-tickets, which means accessing the platforms can be done by simply scanning the barcode on your phone, like so. Our service this evening is formed of 12 coaches, which is two six-car trains coupled together. The front set continues on to Ramsgate, whilst the rear unit and our refurbished set will terminate at Ashford International. Our set is the first of the two to arrive. Southeastern operates 29 of these six-car Class 395 Javelin trains, which are the first variants of Hitachi's 8300 family to operate in the UK, having entered service in 2009. This particular set features a trainbow livery design on its driving cars, which it received in 2018. You may remember a comparison I did last year between Southeastern's mainline and high-speed services. Back then, all trains contained the standard interior. Now Southeastern is refurbishing the trains into as new condition, given they're almost 15 years old, with this set being the first one done, so I'm interested to see what it's like in the flesh. Before we board, however, the second set has just arrived to couple to this one. The process is rather interesting, so let's sit back and watch for a bit. Okay, now that's done, let's board the refurbished Javelin. One thing I was disappointed to see was people having dirty the carpets already, though bear in mind it's done a full day on the southeastern network. The PRM and bike areas are here, and in the front is the wheelchair accessible toilet, which I'll look at later on. For now, we'll move on to the second carriage and go through today's route. We'll be travelling along the HS1, calling at all stations en route in Greater London and Kent. Despite this, our journey time to Ashford International is only scheduled to take around 37 minutes, which is very impressive. Right, I can't wait to show you more of this interior, so sit back and enjoy the ride. We depart London St Pancras International on time at 19.07 UK time.
Immediately after leaving St Pancras, we enter the first of the HS1's many tunnels to call it our first stop of Stratford International around six minutes later. This is considered the white elephant of the line, despite the name and intent by Eurostar to stop here for the London 2012 Olympic Games, no international services have ever called here. The name remains to distinguish it from Stratford Regional Station just down the road. There are more tunnels after this, so let's get into the features, starting with the seat. Minus the maquette change, the comfort is more or less the same, though I've always found, and still do find it, very acceptable. There are also foldable armrests in the middle and aisle side of the seat, with its legroom being generous despite the fairly average seat pitch. A foldable tray is present with the cup holder, which I was conveniently able to test thanks to a friend giving me a can of Red Bull. It did the job nicely even at speed. The seat reservation displays still remain, as this future proves the train in the event they're repurposed elsewhere. And now, for the biggest change of all, the power socket. This contains a UK and possibly European first of having both USB-A and C sockets in addition to the three pin socket, which is brilliant and very versatile. I also really love the ambience of this new interior. The use of the turquoise handles has split opinions, but I personally like them. Not to mention it looks less tired than the old lilac ones. This portion of the HS1 sees us run parallel to the Tilbury branch, served by C2C services. A large amount of freight traffic for overseas goods also runs on both routes. This is also a good spot to witness the 140 mile an hour running of the javelins from a different angle. We then find ourselves passing the rather impressive looking Dartford Crossing, a vital toll bridge linking the counties of Kent and Essex over the River Thames since 1991. Oh, and here's something else you may not know. Did you know that over 80% of people watching my videos are not subscribed to me? If that's you, please do so as it's free and the best way to support my work. Thanks! As we're underneath yet another tunnel, let's have a walkthrough of the rest of the train. The seating arrangement is in a 2x2 two two configuration, featuring a mixture of airline and table seats. Also note that the Class 395s are standard class only. Yes, this is a high speed train, but it's a regional high speed train at the end of the day, so you can't expect an LNER style service, even if the seats are more comfortable. Towards the vestibule of the sixth carriage is a standard toilet, and that ends the walkthrough. This timed well with the arrival into Ebbsfleet International, our penultimate stop before Ashford. Unlike Stratford International, both Ebbsfleet and Ashford used to see Eurostar services call here. However, services were withdrawn to enable Eurostar to focus on its core routes, with no expected date of return, if any, known at the time of recording. My favourite part of the HS1 is the Medway Viaduct which enables us to traverse the River Medway and view some very picturesque landscape. The HS1 itself is rather unique in that it's the only part of the British rail network built to European gauges. The maximum line speed is 300 km per hour, though the javelins operate much slower at 225 km per hour or 140 miles an hour. That being said, these trains have reduced what would otherwise be a two hour journey to one which is just under 40 minutes, which is very impressive. Right, one last thing to check out, and that's the toilet. Let's go for the accessible one. Door locked, and we can begin. Having only just been refurbished, it's very clean and has great amenities. That is, until we get to the sink, where the soap is sadly not stocked. Yes, everything else worked fine, however, the damage was done. Before I head back, here's a close-up of the seats in the wheelchair area. Unlike the regular seating areas, these only contain USB-A sockets, so a bit of a shame to see the lack of consistency, but at the same time, it's better than nothing. And with that, it's time to summarise as our journey comes to a close. 
Overall, I really like the new interior of the Javelins, despite the controversy surrounding them. It's such a simple yet effective refurbishment and really brings the interiors of these trains to life in my opinion. Whilst the improvements are rather subtle, I think this is better than completely replacing everything like the seat types etc. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As for my ticket price, I paid £25.50 for a super off-peak day return, including my railcard discount of a third for this trip, which I booked on the day. For a journey that would otherwise be over two hours, I didn't find this to be too bad for what's essentially a walk-up fare. Owing to congestion on the HS1, we arrive into Ashford International a couple of minutes late. So now you've heard from me, I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this brand new interior? Do let me know in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed the video today and if you did, please like and share it to aid the channel's growth and do consider subscribing and enabling notifications for more content such as this every Friday at 5pm. Our unit now detaches and terminates here, whilst the front unit continues on to Ramsgate via Dover Priory. The unit then gets ready and heads back to the depot after a long day of service, which signals my queue to do the same and head back to London. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.